All right, hello. Um, boy, this is so exciting. And uh, I was thinking of how to start, and one, uh, one thing that came to mind was uh, one of those Bob Dylan quotes from way back when, which was, um, I hope I get it right, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And uh, I remember thinking when I was pretty young, and I think I you know, first heard Bob Dylan, um, who had such a terrible voice, I could never figure out why he became so famous. But he was uh, one of the most famous people from, from my growing up. And um, I remember thinking, I like that. I think I would like my life to always be part of the solution. And I, I look around at this room, and I think everybody here really is part of the solution. Um, and I feel like we are giving our own TED Talk. I also am a, a huge uh, fan of TED Talks. They have such integrity. Um, and I think that this has such integrity. So I'm very proud to be uh, the art therapy representative. I'm sure I'm not the only art therapist here. Um, but when I came out to uh, California 30 years ago as an art therapist, um, I was looking for my people. And, um, and you are my people. So I'm so glad to be here. So how art heals us. So I was asked to really talk why art. Because of all the things you could do with people to help them through traumatic situations and just help them become their best selves. Um, there are other things besides art that you can do, but what makes art so special? And, um, and I certainly believe, as we do, that art is, is, if not the best thing, one of the best things, and, and I think most of us think it is literally the best thing. So how art heals us. This was a, um, a picture of a child who I worked in Boyle Heights when I first came to LA uh, 30 years ago. Ironically, I worked uh, down the street from Fabian. I worked at a community service organization that was right across from the Hollenbeck Boys Club, Boys and Girls Club. And uh, I worked with children of trauma. I worked, uh, and that's how I got my MFT hours. I got 1,000 hours there. And this was one of the drawings that uh, a child whose uh, parents had, they were given to me if they have their parent, one of their parents had had at least three DUIs. They were assumed that they were living in an alcoholic home if, and so they got free counseling. And so this was a child, and I love this picture because it kind of shows how art at first glance can look kind of like a happy picture, and then you look closer and you see that it's not at all. And I use this as an example a lot of times because parents or people who don't know much about what art is as a language will think of art being a decoration. And they'll think it's a nice thing that children do, but they kind of don't understand that it's actually telling you something that's very important. And so when you look at this at first, a lot of parents would say, I've heard it many times, like, oh, what a pretty picture. Where are we gonna hang that up? Because they're not really looking at it, because they're assuming it's just a nice pastime, something that the child did to constructively pass some time, but that it's not really saying anything more than something to hang and make the refrigerator look nice. And so parents, thinking that they're doing the right thing, will say actually the wrong thing and shut down the channel of art as a voice, of art as a language. And I see that happen, again, as, since I've used art all my life um, as an art teacher, as an art therapist. I see that with good intentions. And so this one, you see the heart, you see the page is full, and you think, oh, what a pretty picture. And many parents, I guarantee you, if you gave this to parents, if they were picking up their child from kindergarten, and um, the teacher said, oh, we did some drawings today. The parent would say, oh, that's so nice. Let's, let's go. But look at it. So the child is in the middle. Uh, this is the, the self-portrait. And here's her father. She's written, the, here's her mother, here's her sister, here's her dog. So one thing, when you study art therapy, you learn how to do a graphic interpretation. And just to tell you one thing about this, one of the things that you evaluate is how many barriers there are between the child or the self and their parents. Because as many people have said today already, attachment is just a natural biological urge. We all want to feel close to and protected by our parents. It's just part of being human. And so if you look at the girl, all these account as, li as barriers. So the barriers are in her pigtail. There's the barrier of the door. The doorknobs get points. And you literally uh, uh, can point these out and count them up. So her father is extremely detached. Even her mother. Look, she's in what looks like a jump rope. The dog is between her, a flower is between her, the grave is between her. It is like she is so detached from her parents. So it's certainly not a pretty picture, and that's where the work begins, to really look at it and, um, and just honor it as, a, as some real communication. 
So this is a picture, there I am in the middle, and some of you might actually be depicted in that yourself. Um, years ago, I was asked to do some workshops and lesson plans for uh, Windows, and this is uh, the counselors uh, learning some new techniques. And um, so we all believe here, we're sort of preaching to the choir, we all believe that art heals, but let's look at the anatomy of it. So the anatomy of artist therapy, the childhood is basically a body experience. You know, when we're children, we run, you know, first of all, we're symbi symbiotically tied to our parents. And then as we individuate, we began to feel like, wow, I'm different. I can bang a pan and make a sound. I can have cause and effect on the world. I can, I am powerful. And then that the power of the first mark is so beautiful when a child gets a crayon in their hand and they do something and they see the result. And so that power of painting and drawing is just very visceral and it begins to help us really feel that, um, that we have control over our world. And so when you're looking at art therapy and asking people to engage in art, you're asking them to go back to really a pre-verbal kind of experience, what they, how they experience themselves early on Memories are stored in your body, but also one of the way you access them is getting below the neck with art materials. And that's why I really call art as the below the neck experience. So getting back to why art, as opposed to say, dramatic play, puppetry, dance, art gives you a tangible result. Dancing is beautiful because it's, it's body, but it doesn't give you the, the evidence afterwards to look at. So the brain is clever, and this gets back to the trauma part that we're always talking about here and our other speakers are, that the brain will just cut off the part of you that's been traumatized as if it didn't happen because that enables you to move on. And so we all know things get repressed, suppressed, and that's why you use art with children or adults. I worked a lot with a VA hospital. Let's get to some of these pictures here. With These are um, men at the VA hospital. I, ran, I developed an art therapy group at the VA hospital at Wadsworth, right here in LA, for one year. It's still going today, I'm very proud to say. Um, and they didn't have any art therapy there. At this particular unit, which was uh, men who were with Desert Storm, Afghanistan or Iraq, they were young men who had been diagnosed with severe PTSD. It, their PTSD was severe enough that they got funded for residential treatment. So that was the group. And we did a lot of stuff with them that a lot of people might have thought, well, that's for children. Because a lot of these things do, these, this is balloon printing. You know, a lot of people might think, well, why would a 30-year-old man who had been in Iraq or Afghanistan want to print with a balloon? Like, how kindergarten is that? And as you know from working with adults, um, if you present anything with dignity and respect and honor the moment, Adults over time will see that you're offering them a channel of real self-expression. It doesn't matter if you're using a Crayola crayon or a balloon or a straw to blow some paint through because they'll see that your intention has honor and dignity. And so the, we ended up with some absolutely beautiful pieces of art that ordinarily wouldn't be the kind of thing you'd think grown med would be interested in doing. Um, so. The other part of the art therapy piece is, you might say if you're an arts advocate like I am, give people art supplies, let them go do their thing. You know, and, or parents might say, here's some art supplies, I'll see you, I'm going to the grocery store. It's like giving them almost something to do while you're gone. But the witness is really important, the therapist, the counselor, the person who's there honoring that expression, because we all have that craving to be heard. You know, everything shifts when you feel that you are truly hurt. That shifts everything. And I can tell you today, me coming here today, I've heard a lot of things that have shifted my internal state in a very profound way. And I hope you take your touch tones, your touchstones as a time to do that. Um, because I, I have, and I think that's where that's where all of us can really begin to feel today, not just in our heads like, oh, I have some new techniques that I can do, and I have some new colleagues that I can connect with, but rather, I have some new work. I can get deeper with my own work, because that's really where the source of our passion for our healing, helping heal others and helping heal ourselves is really all about. 
So um, here's one of these beautiful men. I, I love, I look at these pictures of these men who have spent such traumatizing hours defending our country in places that are unfathomable. The, the horror and violence that they have seen is unfathomable. And you know, children and, and people of all ages have that horror, you know, here in LA, that you don't have to go to Afghanistan to experience that horror. Trauma comes in many ways. Um, but you think, how in the world will they have ever get back to normalcy? But little by little, through art, we can do it. So thank you very much.